Hello everyone, I just wanted to go over some very basic SEO elements that you'll want to optimize on your blog, uh, on the blog posts or pages. Um, this over time will help you get optimized and rank for a lot of organic search traffic if, if you take advantage of these elements and optimize each blog post and page. Um, to be relevant and specific to the search traffic that you're looking for. This will help you get a lot of traffic over time. Uh, so the things that we're going to be looking at, uh, they're mostly what they call on-page SEO elements. Um, so these are things that you control on your blog post or page. Um, that help Google determine what your page is about and what it's relevant to. Um, and then there's a few technical things. So um, the things we're going to look at are permalinks, and this is a WordPress setting. Uh, we're going to look at a plugin called Yoast SEO plugin. It's the most popular and, in my opinion, by far the best SEO plugin for WordPress. Um, we're going to just touch on how to do simple keyword research to find out uh, what keywords and phrases that you should optimize for on your blog post. Um, we'll look at ideal content length for a blog post and keyword density which is how many times you should mention the keyword or a variation of the keyword in your post or page. Page meta title um, and page meta description. These are elements that uh, the Google robots read and I'll show you where those are visible. Uh, internal linking. This is a big one for blogs especially. Uh, we'll go into what that means and how to easily uh, take advantage of internal links. And then image tags for images on your poster page. Okay, so let's get started with the permalinks, and I'm just going to go into the back of my WordPress website here, and where you'll find the permalink settings is in the general WordPress settings here. Okay, and you'll see down here we have permalinks. Okay, so what this setting does, if you're not familiar with it, so the default setting when you install WordPress, um, I think is day and name. I'm not even sure anymore what the default setting in it is. It's one of these, it's either this plain setting or day and name. Anyway, what it does is it structure, structures the URLs of your blog post or your page using either just an ID number, if you have the plain setting active, or it takes the day or the date, the full date, I guess, and then the name of your blog post. So uh, the reason that the day and name or the plain setting here which is just a uh, ID number the reason those aren't ideal is because one of the SEO factors that Google uses is, are keywords in the URL so let's say I was googling WordPress SEO. So you'll see on the WordPress.org website, the URL structure includes keywords. Um, so this one, the hierarchy 
starts with plugins, but then we have WordPress SEO as a plugin, and so that's in in their URL. Um, down here, there are other websites. You'll see WordPress SEO is in the URL right here as well. WordPress SEO in the URL. So as you can see, if you have permalinks set with a variety of other numbers or IDs, that's not as SEO friendly. So the best option to remedy this is to choose this setting, which is post name. It takes out the date like this one. It only includes the name of your blog post. So then we'll see when we do a, an example here in a little bit how you can use keywords to name your blog post in the uh, in the editor, and this will become keyword friendly. So one thing to keep in mind if your blog is fairly new and hasn't been indexed by Google for you know, months or years, I would say if you are only a few months old, three to six months, depending on how fast you grew your blog and how many pages you have out there, um, you could go in and update this without any problems right now. But if you have a lot of pages that have been indexed in, in Google and your blog is six months plus years are up to over a year old and you have a lot of pages out there indexed you probably don't want to change the setting right away um, you'll want to take into consideration redirecting the old URLs to the new ones after you do that and it's a little bit more advanced and we can go over that in a different blog post um, or video if uh, a lot of you d discover that you have this problem that you have these ugly URLs active and you have a bunch of pages out there indexed and we can show you how to fix that properly um, by updating this and then implementing 301 redirects which will pass all the old pages to the new ones with anything uh, that links to them so for another day if necessary alright so that's the permalink setting now what we're going to do is go out and get this Yoast SEO plugin I already have it of course but I'll just show you again um, how you get plugins uh, when you're in the back end of WordPress here. Okay, so I would add a new plugin. I'm gonna search for Yoast SEO. Okay, here it is. The stoplight here. It's called Yoast SEO. It has a bunch of installs, good reviews. It's recently updated. Compatible with this version of WordPress. All, all good. You want to watch for those things anytime you download a plugin to install it. So it's already active in my WordPress install. So. I don't need to download it and activate it so what we'll do is we'll go to my WordPress or my Yoast plugin and I'll show you the settings. Let's go take a look at some settings. Okay you'll have uh, Yoast SEO entry over here in your navigation and when you click on that you're going to see all the different options. Um, all we really want to look at are a few settings here. Um, 
I wouldn't worry about any of these dashboard settings um, within this general features company info you can fill out your blog name or company info uh, webmaster tools and security we're not going to mess with today so there's really no settings in the dashboard that you'll need to mess with um, and then I'll show you in the titles and metas settings here a few things we want to make sure of so by default these should all be pretty standard um, force rewrite titles enabled title separator I would just choose any of these hyphens um, maybe the pipe um, enabled keyword analysis enabled those are to help us along when we get to the blog post page that we're optimizing home page those updates are made in the actual home page itself uh, post type so these are the different post types whether it's a post or a page or media like an image or video on your site uh, these are the different elements and the default settings so we want posts index just make sure that's indexed um, show the SEO meta box on post index pages show the SEO meta box media SEO meta box so those default settings are all good you'll see what those are later we don't need to mess with these templates those are all fine um, basically that's in case you don't create your own uh, meta title and meta description on your posts or page uh, Yoast SEO plugin is going to create their own from the title, uh, the pay or page, uh, page or post name. They're going to use a separator, and then they're going to add your site name at the end. And in taxonomies, uh, similar deal. Uh, they've got a template. Uh, so this is for categories, tags, uh, formats. All these are indexed. We're going to leave those as is. Archives is the same way. Uh, the ar author archive is disabled so that we don't create duplicate content. And the other settings. Keywords tag, we don't want that. So all these settings are fine. So we really just need to make sure that within post types, and this should be by default when you um, activate the plugin. These should be indexed. All the meta robots should be indexed on media, pages, and posts. We want to make sure of that more than anything. Okay, so those settings are fine. We're good to go there. In the advanced settings, let's see if there's anything that we want to mess with here. Um, this will be disabled by default. Uh, certain WordPress themes come with breadcrumbs and certain do not. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it, whether yours does or not. Um, they can be helpful for SEO reasons, but typically for a blog, they're not necessary. Um, they're more necessary for things like e-commerce websites but yeah I wouldn't worry about it too much if you don't have them if you have them it's great permalinks we already discussed I think Yoast SEO just gives you an option here keystrip the category so this is asking if when you create a post within a category, if you want to keep the category name within the URL as well, uh, I would leave that as keep. Rest of these, I would just leave as default. So RSS not relevant to what we're doing today. Okay, so 
all settings are good. Now let's go to a blog post. I'm going to create an example blog post and show you how we're going to do keyword research and then fill in all these settings in the Yoast SEO plugin for our blog post in order to have on-page optimization of the SEO elements as as good as pot as we possibly can for uh, good on page SEO. Okay, so first thing we need to know are the keywords or phrases um, that we want to optimize our blog post for. So what I'm going to do, let's see, I'm gonna make a new blog post and just for an example let's see I'm going to do a blog post about uh, crock pot chicken recipes or a recipe I'm gonna pretend like my blog post is about a crock pot chicken so it looks like Google already knows what I'm looking for interesting right so so I googled crock pot chicken recipe and so what I'm what I'm trying to do here is find keywords and phrases and modifiers around my blog post. So let's say I had a blog post here. It's going to be so one thing we want to title our blog post with something uh, that not only will a attract uh, visitors when they're searching in Google but we also want to be keyword friendly and um, focused around searches that and people often search for uh, that's relevant to our blog post so um, if I'm doing a blog post about crockpot chicken recipes and I want to find out so this is these are the search results on page one for crockpot chicken recipe so if these are the ones that are ranking on page one obviously they have good meta titles and descriptions and of course their website is reputable it has authority within Google but part of what we want to find out to determine our keywords and which will become our meta titles and descriptions is what are the competitors using for keywords and key phrases in these elements so what I'm going to do here is to make this smaller. I'm going to go down here and use alright. I'm going to take some notes here. So crock pot chicken recipe. It, that's our primary search as far as we know that's what we're going for so then what I'm looking for are some modifiers that are going to come out of the count competitors keywords and phrases and then other relevant searches 
for the same type of thing. So what I'm seeing here is obviously slow cooker is another name for crock pot. Well, Google knows that and that's one thing they're really good at is associating synonyms or similar keywords and phrases with what's been typed in the search box so I'm going to make note of that slow cooker and then let me look through here for some other so that's a, a that's a synonym for crockpot now we're gonna look for some modifiers what are other people using in Google to modify their search or attract clicks. Well, I see easy delicious so we've got easy, we've got delicious, simple, favorite, okay, so as far as general modifiers, that's all I've found so far. And that's well, plenty to work with, but um, what else we can do is take a look at the related searches down here. So these are other searches that um, Google has deemed as relevant or related to what we searched, but part of uh, the process of, of them obtaining these related searches is because other people have typed those in a significant you know, amount of time. So these have been searched for in relation to crockpot chicken recipes. So I'm going to look through here and see. Now, this might also be relevant if you're blog post in particular is about uh, you know, if it's a healthy recipe. If that's you know, something that is specific to your blog post, you, you're definitely going to want to add healthy. Um, if it's shredded chicken, if it's a shredded chicken recipe, you'll want to add shredded chicken. If it's barbecue, you'll add barbecue. So you get the point. Um, the more specific you can get, uh, the more chances, the easier it would be to get traffic and rank for the search rather than being broad and generic like crock pot chicken recipe. You're going to be competing with all these uh, other sites, and some of them are pretty big, reputable sites. Um, it might be harder to get ranked and get good traffic for a broad search like that whereas if you are specifically looking for people that are interested in reading a recipe about shredded chicken maybe healthy chicken healthy shredded chicken the more specific you can get the easier it be to show up in search results just remember that too okay so what we're going to do is take what we've got here and let's go back and move this out for now. So let's go back here and I'm going to put in some placeholder content just so we can get all the elements on here to react like they would if you had a completed blog post. So let's see. So this website here, I just you may have seen this text on sites that aren't 
complete yet. It's just placeholder text. And you can just tell it how many words you want in paragraphs, and it'll print a bunch of uh, placeholder text. So I'm going to do that. And I haven't put in a title yet because I would, I want to get down here first and work on some of these elements before I show you how to choose your title. Okay, so this is the Yoast SEO editor, or uh, I guess it's the auditor that gives you the green light to go when all your SEO elements are where they should be. So we're going to go over how to get these elements all dialed in and get green lights on all these. So the first thing they want you to do is give you give a focus keyword or phrase. Well, what we know, what we decided this back here is that we're going for crockpot chicken recipe and in order to modify this a little bit I am going to add this healthy modifier to it make this a little bit more realistic of a post so, that's going to be my primary focus keyword is healthy crock pot chicken recipe. So I'm going to put that in here as my focus keyword. Now this doesn't have anything to do with, focus keyword doesn't have anything to do with your actual optimization. This is just telling the Yoast SEO plugin, hey, these are, this is the keyword or phrase I want you to grade my work on. So they're going to tell you in this analysis what needs fixed, um, what's in the red, what's in the orange, what's in the green. So right off the bat, they say they say you've never used this focus keyword before very good so what they're telling us is if you've done a blog post before about healthy crock pot chicken recipes um, you're gonna want to optimize for a different phrase that's still relevant to your post because you don't want duplicate titles and, and descriptions in your blog. Otherwise, the, Google gets confused. They don't know which ones to rank better. And so the next one they're telling us the text contains 350 words. This is more than or equal to the recommended minimum of 300. Well, we won't get in too deep on content length. Um, there are a lot of studies out there for blog posts about the ideal content length or the minimum. And some people say thousands of words, some people say 500. Yos says minimum of 300. Well, I can tell you from experience, a lot of it depends on how old your blog is and how much authority and reputability you have within Google. I've seen a lot of blog posts that rank out there with a few hundred keywords and some with thousands, but ideally the more content, the better, especially if it's good quality content. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about this as long as you have a significant amount of good quality content. But yes, anything over 300 words is definitely good. Uh, I usually try and, and get close to 500 as a minimum. But again, it just depends. Focus keyword does not appear in the URL, 
URL for this page. Okay, so now this somewhat has to do with the title and the permalink. So we talked about the permalink. The reason the permalink is important and the reason why we want to name our blog post using our keywords or phrase or combination or variation of is because here I'll show you we're gonna do so if I name my blog post healthy crock pot chicken recipe we want to make sure that this permalink matches now you can see I have my keywords in the permalink which is SEO friendly okay the next thing we're going to do we're gonna start in this editor so as we talked about this is the title and this is the description down here they're showing us exactly what we need to populate in order to optimize our SEO title in our meta description here so again we're gonna pull this up and this is where we're gonna pull our keywords from the list we made so in the SEO title you want to have a keyword or phrase as close to identical as possible and so you can literally just copy and paste exactly how you want your primary keyword or key phrase to be in here but since we have all these characters left, so this is telling us in the orange that we've got you know, half of the character limit, nearly half available. And we want to maximize that, as it says down here, page title's too short, use the space to add keyword variations or create compelling call to action copy. So I'm going to add something in here that is, so we've got our key phrase in here. You could add more keywords, but I'm going to add more of a, an enticing element to it. So I'm going to add fast, easy, So, I've added a keyword, um, well, a couple keywords. I've added easy, I've added fast. You know, some people might be searching for fast and easy healthy crock pot chicken recipes or fast crock pot chicken recipes. Any of those combinations, Google could conceivably show um, a blog post in search results for. So then I'm going to take advantage of the rest of the keywords down here that I have left. So I'm going to use delicious, favorite, simple. We can use healthy again. We don't have to, but um, Yoast is going to recommend it. Uh, so let's do something like I've got one here that I saved. I'm going to start with this as a meta description. So a family favorite crock pot chicken dish. So actually what I'm going to do here, since I've already used crock pot, this should probably be two words. 
Since I've already used crock pot, I'm gonna use slow cooker because you can see I've already used slow cooker in the main title, or I mean crock pot in the main title. And we know that Google is associating slow cooker with crock pot. But if we use the exact keyword of slow cooker in here, that reinforces the, the relevance and the relation and um, similarity of crock pot and slow cooker so that uh, whichever way someone searches for it, we've got a better chance to show up for both. And then I've added some other tidbits in here. A family favorite slow cooker dish that's simple to cook and the kids love it. Um, I know a lot of, there's a lot of search that are in relation to making slow cooker recipes for kids so I added that in there um, and then the, at the end I'm somewhat going to describe the recipe I just obviously made this up but I'm somewhat describing the recipe or what the post is about uh, giving some detail around it so that people can see when they're in the search results they can actually read what it's about um, provide some things that are somewhat enticing and then I say get the recipe here it's kind of a call to action that's the nature of the meta description you want to use some keywords you want to add some value or some details and then a call to action is always good if you can fit it so the one thing let's see how the crock pot or what's it telling us here oh uh, we need to update this down here so that it understands Okay, so now we've got the green light on page title, meta description, SEO title contains a focus keyword, you've never used this keyword, what don't we have yet? Focus keyword does not appear in the URL for this page. Now, so go back here I screwed up by not putting a space in between here so if you update this you have to remember to update this okay now what else do we need to fix here Focus keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph of the copy. Okay, so this is part of the, the keyword density within the actual paragraph copy or blog content, blog post content. So this is our focus keyword. It's likely you will already have this keyword or phrase in your blog post somewhere. If you don't, you want to make sure to have it exactly as it is or exactly as you're optimizing for somewhere within the content and usually multiple times. So I'm going to put it in the first paragraph. And so we're going to see. like focus keyword now appears in the first paragraph of the copy however we're going to look at this keyword density is 0.3 percent which is too low 
keyword was only found one time. This isn't quite as big of a deal anymore if the rest of your copy supports the, the single uh, key phrase that you do have in here. But if you can use variations, it doesn't have to be exact even though Yoast, uh, their tool here, is going to tell you to feature it exactly multiple times. It doesn't have to be. Um, like we saw earlier, Google knows how to associate similar keywords and phrases, so it uses those as part of this algorithm. But I'm going to just add the keyword a couple more times, once in each paragraph, and we're going to see what the settings tell us. Okay, so now it says keyword density is 0.8%, which is great. Keyword is found three times. Just make sure not to go overboard with that. Um, I'm not going to test it. I think it'll tell you. If I was to put it in 10 times, I think it would say you're over optimized because you don't want to use, you don't want to keyword stuff your content. So we're good to go on keyword density. No links appear in this page. Consider adding some. So this goes back to, let's see, this goes back to internal linking right here. And this is super important, especially as your blog grows and you, you get more pages and posts out there indexed in Google. Internal linking not only helps your users to link in between other relevant content on your blog or your website, but it helps Google link in between those with when the robots crawl your site. And what that does is multiple things. It helps the rest of your website stay updated and within Google search index more often and it also creates more relevant more relevance from certain pages to other pages so for example the way you would create an internal link and the way you would want to create an internal link so if I was linking Let's say, so let's just say I have another recipe on my website that's not for the crock pot. It's a chicken recipe, but it's, maybe it's for the oven. What I could do here is highlight just the part that says chicken recipe and insert an internal link and so if I go to link options let's say so let's say I had a page here it was called oven chicken recipes I'm just gonna link to my contact us page because I don't have another chicken recipe Anyway, if I had another chicken recipe, I could link from this one using this as the internal link text. That's going to create relevance and a link right back to my other chicken recipe. And it's all around good for SEO. It's all around good for the user. Um, it'd be even better for the user if, let's say, I... Instead of linking it here, I could have just gone to the bottom of the post and said, check out my oven baked chicken recipe as well. And then I could make that link even more relevant by including baked chicken recipe link that 
Whatever, we'll just go to a different page. Done. And that creates relevance and helps users navigate through your site once they're on a blog post. And it helps Google's robots find relevant content from other pages. Big win-win. Okay, so almost all the green lights are populated, but we still they recommend we have an image. Yes, every blog post should have an image. It's not required, but ideally you would have an image in your blog post because everyone loves media and pictures and videos. Um, so I'm going to show you what happens if I add an image here though. Just add this one. Okay. So we've added, added an image. Well, it's not green yet. It says the images on this page do not have alt attributes. Okay. What are those? Well, image tags. That is what alt attributes is referring to. And what those are, let's go back up to this image. So if I click on this and edit this image, we've got alternative text, that's an alt attribute. And then we've got the image title attribute, that's another alt attribute. Well, what that is, is what Google's robots read when they come to an image. Uh, a user can't see these, but Google reads those in order to get a description of what your image is supposed to be about. So what we want to do with those is take... So let's cancel this and go back and get our focus keyword. We want to take our focus keyword now this was a recipe about a crockpot chicken recipe this image would probably be a um, photo I've taken of my crockpot chicken recipe when it was completed or something like that so it would be relevant to name this the caption isn't uh, an alt attribute it's not required but it's just another added benefit your key phrase keyword in there and we're going to go down to the title attribute those are really the only two you have to worry about um, like I said captions not necessary update those and actually this is why you don't want to use the caption because it includes it in your blog can or if you want, you can. I don't want to include that. All right. Now the image is optimized with alt attributes. We've got the green light. So like I said, the meta description, they're saying it doesn't contain the keyword. Well, I don't want to use the same exact keyword or key phrase that I used in the SEO title because I know that it's better if you have something that's a synonym or a similar keyword or phrase that you can use in place of it to reinforce it. I know that that is better these days. If I wanted to you know, make the plugin happy, and add that, it's going to give me the green lights all the way around. 
but like I said, I prefer to use synonyms when I can so that I can guarantee that I'm going to get some focus on the other um, on the other keyword which was slow cooker that I would add slow cooker in here and not worry about the green light but anyway it looks good all green I'm gonna leave it so once that's complete you've got your on-page optimization dialed in now like I said keyword content or I mean uh, blog content length whatever you can you know whatever you can make of it as long as you can make it as relevant as you can make it um, keyword density mention your keyword or similar keyword or phrase within your content a few times which is probably naturally going to happen if you've written a good blog post make sure your permalinks are activated but also make sure that this is updated in here if you made adjustments and then figure out the best keywords and phrases to use by doing your research against the competitors in Google figure out the best title and description fits your needs and then just go through and get your green lights aside from that uh, we can get more in depth on some of the other technical and off-page SEO elements in the future just let us know what information you'd like to uh, watch or read and we'll do our best to get more content out there uh, don't forget to publish your blog post and if you have any other SEO questions just get a hold of us and we'll do what we can to help alright thanks a lot